Hi, I'm Campbell, and this is my partner in adventure, Gemma. Oh, and that's Ellie, our motorhome. We bought her back in June 2021 and have been exploring the beauty of our home country of Scotland ever since. You join us as we set off on a road trip around a 516 mile stretch of unbelievable beauty known throughout the world as the North Coast 500. Over the next two months we will be exploring this route in a way that you have never seen before, uncovering its best kept secrets and exploring it in a way that only slow travel allows. Come along on our adventure with us and get ready to see a side of the North Coast 500 route that will blow your mind. In this week's episode, we round up our East Coast saga by diving deep into the historical side of the North Coast 500, hunting for Scotland's most beautiful castles. We also discover some of the NC500's hidden beaches and get into the festive spirit a little bit too early. So kick back, relax and enjoy our alternative side to the North Coast 500. So our next stop isn't actually one we're expecting to make at all because the last time we were doing this road trip, about five years ago, we thought you had to actually pay to get into this area so we never actually came, we completely neglected it. And it's a castle that sits just north of Dornoch. It's called... Dunrobin Castle! It's absolutely beautiful. I'd say possibly one of the most impressive castles that you will see in the North Coast 500. And yeah, as Campbell said, the last time we came, got some pictures from the front, walked around the path, round to the beach and got some pictures of it from like way over there. We are like watching everyone going in and check these mugs paint going to a garden. Turns out it's free. Or it is Whether just it now was anyway. Made, I don't know, but yeah. yeah. It's absolutely stunning. There's a huge complex out the back, huge big park, loads of little like garden bits, a water fountain, and it all views up onto the actual castle itself with its kind of fairy tale spires and everything. Very, very beautiful place to come and visit. Now as beautiful as Don Robin Castle just may be, as you guys know if you've been watching our channel for a while. We always prefer castle ruins just because we feel like they're a bit more mystical, magical, and it really lets your imagination run free. So as beautiful as Dunrobin Castle is, it's not our favourites on the North Coast 500. Which of course begs the question, what is the best castle on the North Coast 500? Let's find out. So we've just driven into Caithness, we're on the east coast of Scotland. And do you know, I'm actually really surprised because it's so, so quiet on the roads. We've been reading online about how busy the North Coast 500 has been. But I think we've really hit the nail on the head with coming at the end of summer because, yeah, the roads are really, really quiet. And hopefully the sights are too. Oh, it's all right. Oh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. So we've just actually driven past the Wallago Steps. And my goodness, I take back what I said. The car park looks absolutely rammed. So we are parking at the Cairn of Get. Um, and we're just going to walk over. It's possibly about a 10 15 minute walk. I actually remember we parked here the last time that we came to the Wallago Steps. Definitely. I'll actually show you the car park in a wee second. It's this beautifully peaceful little spot. There's an old, older couple sitting having a picnic over there on our left, and it just looks beautiful. So, yeah, yeah definitely recommend park here and then just take a walk over to the Wallago Steps instead. So, that's a beautiful little pond. Very tranquil. So yeah, the Wallago steps are our next stop. And as Gemma said, it was looking very busy. I was kind of expecting that to be honest, as I think it's one of the more popular stops around the North Coast 500, especially in this area. But I read online that the upkeep and repair of them is actually done by the houses that are just uh, set above them. So I think it's like local volunteers, which is like absolutely insane when you actually see them. Well, what a view to start off this little bit of the trip. Sun shining. And so that's the signpost you're aiming for. And this is how busy the car park is actually at the Wallago Steps. So imagine needing to put up a sign like that. Do not throw stones at people below. No thro stone throwing, guys. Come on. It is actually really impressive how much work they've done since the last time we were visiting this. This is all brand new kind of slate work here. And there's signs up everywhere saying the mason is working below in building materials. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was just um, kind of uneven steps the last time. Yeah, it was like it crackling rocks. all over the place. So it's so done yeah, a lot it's of work really into good. it. It shows you how popular the place is, really, that the sure. they've put this work in. And this used to be the old boating winch that I guess they would have used to actually bring the boats up onto the shore at a kind of lower tide to be able to store them up on these rocks. But it literally feels like a kind of land lost in time. Down here it's a towering cliffs all the way around, like a cathedral, I guess, to nature. 
and all you can hear is the waves lapping on the shore and a little bit of a trickle of a waterfall just in front of me. It's a really, really beautiful place. And now we have got the fun job of getting all the way back up to the top. So we'll see you guys there. And just 10 minutes down the road, we've arrived at our next stop. The road is actually a lot rougher than I remember it being. We had to drive along it at like one mile an hour. It's like being back in Australia again against all these kind of untarmacked roads. But we're absolutely starving now. What is on the menu, babe? We can have a wee snack. Well, technically we've not really had lunch yet. And I'm usual. not risking going anywhere near that little bakery without some food in me. So we've got some leftover sourdough bread that we had for breakfast. And to be honest, I'm just gonna make toast. That bread is so good. Discount yeah. sourdough. So before we head out to the castle of Old Wick, we're just having a little flick through this book. Photography, photo, photo, photographing, 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 photographing Scotland. Why couldn't I get that out? This book is amazing. We are literally using it as inspiration as we it's go around. Bible. And it's got a section of Castle of Old Wick in here. Really good, it tells you how to get there, tells you the viewpoints that this guy shot at. Even tells you the shutter speed and exposures right, yeah. that he's used in the focal lens. Like yeah. the guy's a legend, really, really good. Yeah, really, really, really good book. Highly recommend that. So we'll actually put the link in the description below so that you can go and buy it for yourself. Highly recommend. We're actually using it as inspiration for the book that we're writing ourselves. It's given us some good ideas of where to go and shoot. Yeah, we're hoping to try and make the, the our North Coast 500 guide that we're writing like aesthetic and as photogenic and also packed full of like useful information. If you've been onto our website, we're told all the time that our guides are like some of the most in depth on the website. So that's all we're trying to do is just put that beside some beautiful, beautiful photos, and that is helping us loads. Yeah. Shout out to Doogie Cunningham. Doogie Cunningham, what a legend. Yeah. Just walking away from the car, actually, I remember how much of an overhang there is. Oof. That's crazy, you see it. More when you actually get round to the other side, but I remember looking back across here and just thinking, oh my God, do not walk over there. <laughs> you do want to hug the wall. <laughs> yeah, be very careful when you're coming along here. From the car park, you can actually uh, walk all the way round. There's a little gorge that kind of splits the land that the castle sits on in two, so it's on either side. There's just like a vertical drop of about 20 meters down to the sea. This is literally it, Castle Old Wick. Now it's definitely not one of the most impressive castles that you'll find in the North Coast 500, but it dates back to the 12th century. So it is very, very old. And to think that they're constructing these kind of three and four story buildings back in those days with nothing but their bare hands is impressive in itself. Today, however, it's just the ground floor that's remaining. You can kind of see the other floors once you get in and actually going around it. I think there's scaffolding in it just now. Right. I don't know if they're doing repair work or something, but um, yeah, it's a cool place to come and check out. Admire the cliff views. If you're into your bird watching, there's some birds that nest along the cliff as well. But if you're into your impressive castles, then you will absolutely love what we are doing tomorrow morning. I cannot wait. Oh, here, we, here we are. Oh. I don't know this one. Light. All right, so we're at our camping spot. We're at a place called Keith Sands. I think it's just beside the golf course. There's literally a dude that's pitch black now. Sunset 25 minutes ago. And there's a dude over on the putting range. Fair play to him, man. He's got to get his shots in for the day. <laughs> but he's literally sitting over there putting in the dark. It's a pretty peaceful spot. Um, there was another little car park further down that we parked at first of all. There was this music. Plane. I don't know if it was from one of the cars that were about to pull away because there was a bunch of people in swimming in the sea or if it was another van that was parked in there so we just thought we'll patch it, come further up here where it is nice and peaceful and we've got the whole food to ourselves. So we're just going to jump in the back, get an early night's sleep because we're going to try our best and get off for sunrise for one of the best castles that you'll find in the North, East, North Coast 500. Um, I'm very excited to go there because it was my favourite castle the last time we did this route. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the morning for that. Okay guys, so I just wanted to interrupt whatever nonsense is happening at this point in the video to tell you all about an exciting announcement that we have been waiting for weeks to share with you. Yeah, we've teased at this a little bit, but we're so excited to announce that we are writing a book. This book is all about the North Coast 500 road trip in Scotland, and it's about how to travel it responsibly and sustainably. We're gonna be going into depth about all of the lesser known sites along this route that we can only have acquired the knowledge of over the last two months from basically living on the northern coast of Scotland. We're opening up pre-orders today, so 
hit that card up above if this is something you're interested in and want to read more about. We can absolutely guarantee this is something if you like Scotland, you're not going to want to miss out on. But that's enough about this for now, let's get back to today's adventure. I guess one of the reasons why I love this castle ruin so much is just how intimate you can actually get with the history of it. Like you can proper get in and around, walk around under the parapets, go down into the dungeons, read about what every single room had as a function back, you know, 500 years ago. Now we've explored quite a few castles along the northern coast and just also in other countries that we've visited too, but I think it dates back to me visiting this castle for the first time where my interest in these kind of old castle ruins really sparked off just because I fell in love with this ruin so much. So it's a very special place to me. And it is one of the other reasons why I love this castle is the kind of pictures and the amount of effort that's gone into actually explaining what its use would have been for. And they've even got their own little bakery. There you go. Oh, look at that, all the bed. bed. Oh, I want bed. <laughs> <laughs> look at that, all the bread baking in the oven. Honestly. Apologies to anybody looking at me in that video because I've just gone on to do an Instagram story and realised that I very much still have bedhead. I haven't even looked in the mirror this morning. I haven't even touched my hair. It's alright babe, not it's all right. of us can have as gorgeous locks as me <laughs> all the time. I just roll out of bed looking like a model. Beautiful, I should put my hat on. I don't know how people live in vans that don't have a shower. <sighs> Speaking of which, let's go home and have a shower. Absolutely. <laughs> Come over here. I did hear this castle was haunted, by the way. So I can only assume that someone's come down here in the middle of the night and had their pants scared off. Oh god. Watch out guys, bring a spare pair of pants if you're gonna come here in the middle of the night. Distraction. Look how many sheep there are. Loads of them. Hi! Oh, you can't pass. Don't, don't try. Right. Well, how's the lighthouse? It's pretty pretty. Yeah, good. Nice shot. Nice shot. Yeah, the sky is beautiful. Good. Isn't it? good. So, what's the next stop? It's <sighs> a very good question. I'm thinking with my belly. I'm thinking porridge. Absolutely, sure it's up. So coming into winter, we're properly starting to love our warm porridges for breakfast. What we tend to do is just kind of soak the oats the night before. Um, just kind of half and half, half oats, half milk. And then we just leave it overnight and it just makes such a deliciously kind of thick, creamy porridge. A little bit of peanut butter in there and then just drizzle it in fruit. And it's just amazing. Don't mind me guys, I've just got a big bandage finger. I realise I've got a scalp and like everything I read online says I need to soak it in vinegar but we don't have vinegar, we've only got white wine vinegar. So I've like doused this like um, kitchen towel in it and I've sellotaped it to my hand. But I now stink of vinegar. <laughs> I believe you can oh smell through goodness. this camera guys. Between the two of us, you I know, between me finger. picking up um, scales left, right and centre and Gemma burning her leg. Oh! What are we like? Uh, ridiculous. gem of a park up. Now, I'm not sure exactly where we are, I haven't actually checked the map yet, but it's in between Keith Beach and Keith Castle. Would you be um, tempted to say that we're in Keith? Ah, <laughs> yeah, that would be right, we are in Keith. <laughs> okay, so this gem of a park up is in Keith. And yeah, you pay a £10 donation at the Village Inn and get electric hookup and there's toilets as well and we're all about the hookup because we really need to charge up and it's it's really difficult to run a generator I have to say every time we turn it on I get a little bit mortified we do do it in like 
areas where there's no one else around. Yeah. And if we can get electric ho hook up and we just pay a ten pound donation, it's a winner. Yeah, let's go. Look at how neatly packed away that cable is. I, know, I, I want to see. That. I want to see that in the exact same position when you're done with. I want to see that I did that. But... Everyone knows who did that. I know. That end goes. Yep. No, Gemma. And it's ruined. Thank you. <laughs> All of that hard work, man. <laughs> Bosh! It is always such a good feeling when we find somewhere with an electric hookup. For as cheap as £10, where the toilets are there as well. We've got an empty toilet and we've got full. It looked as if there was a water hose actually, so maybe tomorrow morning we could fill Ooh, up on water. Yes. Um, and then we just need to find somewhere to empty a toilet in the grey water when that becomes full as well. So. We're gonna batten in for the night here, get some work done. We've got a lot of stuff to do. I need to get this weekend's video sorted. You've got another couple of blog posts to get done. So I'm not gonna lie, like we managed to like split our stories and our videos a lot so that we don't have to bore you with a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, but it has been a absolutely manic I know. recently. It's ridiculous. Like, it's um yeah, literally dawn till dusk graph, isn't it? Yeah. It's just days like today that really remind me that we're still in Scotland because it was blistering blue skies about an hour ago. And since we've come along to Duncasby Stacks along the cliffs, it's freezing. It's There's really just windy. suddenly this northerly wind blasting as well. Put our jackets on and it wouldn't. But we're coming along to see our last stop of the day. As I said, it's up at Duncasby Head Lighthouse and it's these beautiful sea stacks that sit just off the coast. And I can see them already, they are just simply spectacular. are entering an area where there's livestock so you just have to be very mindful of like the sheep and the animals that are roaming around and please don't distress them because it's just not necessary. But my goodness, this is busy. Yeah. I reckon we might need to park somewhere else and walk to the toilet to be honest, babe. Toilets are just there. I know, but where we're gonna park. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I think it's fair to say that once you get around to the north coast of Scotland, especially John O'Groats being a really main tourist area, it is jam-packed and it is now 16th of September. Wow. <laughs> And this is what you can expect if you want to get a photo with the Journal Group signpost. It's extremely busy and it's like the middle of September. So prepare to queue. <laughs> I really don't know about that queue, man. I think we can do without a photo. We want to go and see some other sites. We've got the colourful houses over there. We can take a nice picture of some models instead. But my goodness, this is one of the most popular sites. But you know why? I think I know why John O'Groats is actually so popular. And that's because it's Christmas every day in John O'Groats. I promise I'm excited. Very excited for the first Christmas in the van. Christmas is just around the corner. Coming up, just around the bend. I like that, it's got a wee bell. That's very cute. Do you hear us coming? That does ask the question where we're going to put the tree in the van. Um, we just need to get a roof rack and we can put the tree up on top of the roof. Look, here comes a holiday for a family and friends. Christmas coming. Nobody on it because the water's freezing. Exactly. Makes it even better. Got it all to ourselves. Yeah, we were basically driving along trying to find somewhere where we could, you know, pitch up for the night and try to kind of end this video off here. And we just couldn't resist stopping in it here. It's literally just down the road from Duncasby Lighthouse and we just saw no one was on it. So, what better place than this ah! to end the video? 
and watch Gemma get sand in her socks. So much sand! <laughs> and yeah, I cannot think of a better place to sign this video off and end our East Coast road trip. And I think this is a perfect welcome to the northern coast of Scotland because this, I'm guessing, is exactly what we've got to look forward to. And it's, got, it's what you guys have got to look forward to as well. If you want to see more beaches like this, Join the gang, hit that subscribe button and make sure you tune in next Saturday for the next YouTube video. We are so excited to see what else we have coming our way. And if you enjoyed watching this guys, please give it a big thumbs up to let us know that you liked it. And give us a comment and let us know what you think was the best site. Now, basically you guys hitting the like button just lets us know that you're enjoying the videos and that we should keep doing what we're doing. And it really means the world to us. And yeah, we cannot wait to see you guys again in the next one. See ya. You've got, you've got flour all over your cheek. Oh, That's funny. That's funny. I'll zoom in on that and see if you can see it earlier on. That shows that I enjoyed my bit of toast. Where are we putting him in the van? Oh my goodness. 500 pounds. That's good. Please. <laughs> Guys, when we hit 100 Patreons, we're going to get one of them for the van. What are we calling her? Ellie. <laughs> Ellie Senior. Yeah, that was about three to four years ago. Yeah, three to four years ago. But I read online that they're actually up, like kept up. Um, but I read online that they're actually like up. Keep. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. Shout out to Doogie Cunningham. Doogie Cunningham, what a legend. Yeah. And this is not just the North Coast 500. In fact, there's not really an awful lot of the North Coast 500 in here. In comparison to the rest of Scotland, you get everywhere. Glencoe, Glentoris and Sky Shed. Stop. This is just turned a different plug of the book. Don't buy this book, buy our book. That's this true. book sucks. So what do you think of the castle? I feel like it kind of reminds me of Pike Castle in Game of Thrones. Just towering above the cliffs with the waves crashing below. Looking out to sea. Does it the resident seagulls of Castle Gernigo. Out in their back like garden. A, a cozy wee home now, up in that tower. I know. Look at that for a back garden. You're making new friends again, babe. Always. How beautiful are they? They're not coming over to say hello, though. How rude. But did you know that Scotland's national animal is not a horse, not a haggis, not a Highland cow, but a unicorn? The best animal. Fun fact of the day. Yeah. A horse with a horn. Yeah.